You ready? Action. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. I won't be able to handle this if you're making me laugh. Okay. Hi there friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to be bringing you this bookish conversation with Latavo. Okay, Latavo. Good thing, okay? Good thing. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about our hair conversation? I'm excited. I have a lot of tea to spill about Ooh. books and also just the book community and all that jazz. Oh, I'm so ready. I didn't realize there would be tea. There will be tea. <laughs> okay, well, you better subscribe and like this video because, you know, I'm bringing you tea for crying out loud. Exactly. So let's start um, from the beginning. Can you tell um, my viewers who you are and what are your bookish tendencies? Okay, my name is Letabo, my Lula. I am a uh, academic. I am a researcher. Come through. I am a freelance writer, an aspiring novelist at some point, mm -hmm. when I stop critiquing other people's <laughs> works. Um, it's easier to critique than it's to write. It's easier to critique and I also feel like there will be revenge when I write my own book. <laughs> <laughs> people who are coming for you yeah and i also work in the civil society space as like uh, i do some lgbti advocacy and programmatic stuff you do such amazing work wow thanks thanks i try yeah and what are your bookish tendencies like what do you like reading when do you like reading when did you when did you fall in love with reading let's start there I fall in love with reading. I remember my my first book, mm -hmm. and this is going to expose my age, but whatever. <laughs> it's okay. It's a safe space. I think the first book that I read outside of the the books that were mandatory to read at school mm -hmm. was Harry Potter Ooh, and the okay. Chamber of Secrets. Okay. And then after that, I just, I remember we were on holiday we were in the middle of the Kruger National Park, which is really mm -hmm. random for them to have a Harry Potter. And I said to my dad, I uh -huh. want that book. And then he was like, okay, oh, fine. And then from then onwards, yeah, I was lucky enough to go to a school that had a really vast library, mm -hmm. made friends with the librarian. Mm -hmm. When she was ordering books, I would tell her what's up. And then that's what we would do. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I started reading. Also just as a means of, escape from mm. the world you know being a weird quirky kid i imagine wasn't same. easy for mm. many of us yeah. <laughs> same 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 reason so yeah many a many a break time spent in the library writing and all of that mm -hmm. so yeah that's how i got into reading also because not to sound um cheesy mm -hmm. but i also wanted to want to as Tony Morrison would say write the book that I want to read mm. so that's where I am that's we appreciate am. that type of name dropping and quoting this is a space for it we love it <laughs> how many books do you usually read a year I know you're quite the avid reader I am the avid reader but like as I previously said in my introduction I have like 58 million thousand <laughs> jobs yes so <laughs> <laughs> It's very difficult. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find time to read. Um, I also want to be the type of person that reads a book and has the time to digest the book. Yes. Afterwards. Yeah. So I'm not one of those people that I just like... On to the next one. And I had a bad... For me, it was a bad habit of reading multiple books. Then, because my attention span is zero, I would not finish any of the books. Okay. Or I would finish the book that I like the most and mine is the others. <laughs> I hate so, yeah. um, but I would say I aim for one book a week. Mm -hmm. So, that's impressive. Just like 53, 54 books. But this year, I, um, I set myself a 100 book challenge because I just watch too much TV. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. So tell us about some of the books that you are looking forward to reading this year. 
So one of the books that I'm excited to read, I'm actually reading it now. I mm-hmm. waited, I hounded, I called publishers. Oh, wow. I did the most is um, The Prophets mm. by Robert Jones Jr. Because everyone is equating him and putting him on the pedestal of Toni Morrison and James Baldwin. Baldwin. And what? for me, if, yeah. you, if you're saying that, then you better come with the you fire. Better come like, yes. I'm reading that like, I need to see on the first page that, yeah, yeah no, this is a storyteller. Sorry, yeah, I this is see. this is worth the comparison, and it it is. Is it? it? Oh is. wow! It's ambitious, ambitious, but of someone that is writing in the now, mm-hmm. trying to evoke a voice of then, mm. is very. He did it so beautifully. Wow! It's not mimicking mm-hmm. those authors, mm-hmm. but it can stand next to them. Mm, I love that. As a baby sibling. As a baby sibling. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Akweke has yet another book yes. coming out. Yes. Um, if they are watching this, please unblock me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> why were you blocked on Twitter? Wait, explain yourself. I was blocked on Twitter because I disagreed with the way they centered oh. themselves when Tony Morrison passed away. Okay. They found a, a clip that was in the archives that wasn't readily available and mm-hmm. it was just uh, I just thought it was like chill, you know. Mm. It was like, you should thank me because without me, you wouldn't know this clip. Oh, no. no. So mm. I just thought, you know, yeah, I might have called them a narcissist, but <laughs> they blocked me. Mm-hmm. I do enjoy reading their work. I think they're phenomenal. Yes. I think, I wish I had the capacity to have what, they have what, 13 manuscripts, five have been published. They actually they just, just posted something on Instagram about mm. having written five books in different and ge- in, in five different genres. Mm-hmm. That's quite impressive. It's phenomenal. I think what they're doing is otherworldly. Like, also well, technically of, it is otherworldly. Yeah, other that's true. Yeah, the quality of the work is also like impeccable mm-hmm. for me. Um, so I'm really, really excited to get that book and. Which one in particular? I think it's it's their autobiography. I think it's called Dear Saint Turan. Oh yes, yes, yeah. So yeah, it's also one of those books where I'm like calling the publishers to be like emailing them and being like, I need "Where's to my get influencer copy? <laughs> Where's the book? <laughs> I need to get on your vibe of yeah. emailing people, calling oh, people." Guys, yeah. one thing about books, books are expensive. Books are expensive. And the way that I fell into being able to ask publishers for books was one day I tweeted and I was like, I literally, I can't even quantify how mm. much money I've spent on books mm-hmm. in I the can, last I five years. I can imagine, yeah. You have quite the collection. I'm not even talking about my lifetime. In the last five years. And I'm wow. like, guys, give me books. Mm. Because people are literally... People DM'd me, and that's how I also started my bookstagram. People DM me asking me for book recommendations. Mm. People would joke and be like, "I hope you're getting paid for this because, like, every single book you read, mm. I buy." Mm. And then I was, I tagged mm. all the publishers, and I said, "Send me books because True. I am doing the Lord's work." I didn't even say paid me. I just said, "Send, Send me books." Um. But also it becomes awkward because I'm such an honest critique, mm. uh, cr- critic, critic, yes. critic, as we should be. Then some people just don't want to send me books anymore. How? So I must be lying. Yeah, because you see, this is the other tea that I want to spill. Go on. What I've seen on as particularly, I <laughs> particularly on the Bookstagram community, um, as of late, look. I'm the type of person that I was like, as long as you're not harming anyone, mm-hmm. do your own thing. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that Bookstagram needs to be organic and you need to be natural. Look, some people, they're in their bag. They, they don't mm. care 
that your picture looks like a dream sequence on days of our lives because the camera is blurry. Look, they want to share things that have been taken with an iPhone 12X, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, where am I going with this? Um, what is happening on Bookstagram is that the bigger accounts, yeah. and now they've also gone into the smaller accounts, mm. are receiving books in anticipation for the publishing day. Mm. So they will be like, this is, uh, let me give you an example. This is Memorial by Brian Washington. It's coming out on this day. Mm. So now if they've sent this to a hundred bookstagrammers, mm. you know that your feed is for a done. good month. And they do this like not even two weeks in advance. They do this months in advance. They're people that have read a book a year before it even comes out because Whoa. they've got advanced readers' copies. They've yeah. got arcs. So, but then on that day, you will just see happy publishing day to Mang Mang to Mang Mang. And I'm like, they better be paying you for mm. this because also it kind of distorts the number of books that I bought. And I said, you guys were lying because they gave you this book. Yeah. You were lying because this book. I am on that. <laughs> Like this yeah. book is yeah. not nice. You guys are lying. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. I've seen your feed. You don't read Afrofuturism, young adult, what what, but mm. they send you those books because they know you take pretty pictures and that you're going to influence people to buy the book. So no, I no, think no. it's 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 just yeah. It's the relationship with publishers is is really strange. But I do think of the relationships that I've built, mm-hmm. you know, on a personal capacity, like with Tabiso from Blackbird Books. Mm-hmm. Tabiso is able to tell me, here's a book, be honest. Be Shoot. honest, yeah. That's yeah. it. Because I will, I will never lie and say, like, I lied once, but I won't tell you what it was. It was no, I want to know no, which no, one no, 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 no. I did stop knowing dropping because they know it's going to publish my book. I lied <laughs> once about a book because yeah. it was I didn't lie. I packaged it softly. Okay. Um I bought a book and it was my first uh writing my first paid writing review. Okay. And they it's it's quite the tight rope that we have to walk. Yeah. You know, like you don't wanna lie to your audience, but yeah. also at the same time you don't wanna completely give like a disheartening review that's true how do you balance that (laughs) let me get my drink (laughs) i can tell you about to spill more tea how do i manage yeah (laughs) so what i don't do Mm -hmm. is i when publishers send me books, mm-hmm. I don't find the need to review every single book that I read. Good. Yeah. Strategically. Mm-hmm. On a professional capacity, I don't think I can review it with my friends or like on a random tweet, whatever, mm-hmm. I will say something about the book. Mm-hmm. So I think also as much as I want to be honest all the time, mm-hmm. the community is this personal mm. and i've been saying things about people that <laughs> i'm sure if my manuscripts fell on someone's desk they'll be like yeah no today, way. today. <laughs> so um <laughs> it's very difficult um yeah. i think in the beginning when i started reviewing i didn't I separated the art from the artist Mm -hmm. and that the artist is a person. Mm -hmm. It's nothing personal against you. It's Mm. everything to do with what I'm reading. Mm. But I also feel like there was a point where I needed to be generous in my reading. Sure. Because a lot of... Look, in high school, we all read Sweet Valley High, Babysitter's Club, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then, when I started reading properly, mm-hmm. you know, when I, the first time I opened The Bluest Eye, or I read um, Anne Petrie, or I read Alice Walker, mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. all of the seminal texts. Yeah. 
then I had the, the I had a problem because I was comparing contemporary work mm-hmm. to great work because that's the caliber mm-hmm. of writing that I'm used to. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not even the caliber, the cha- the, the the style has changed completely because of the time. Yeah. For instance, mm. I think Toni Morrison had no business writing God Help the Child. I hate that book. I'm like, really? you are. Like, the way that it was trying to be a contemporary piece, I was just like, how am I? Because yeah. it just didn't feel like her. It felt oh. lost, you know? Yeah. So I just needed also to start extending a generosity to the work that I'm reading. Sure. To sure. read it for what it is and not read what, what I expected to yes. be. Not in comparison. Yes. You know? But I do think that mm-hmm. there's a serious, and I say this with all the love and concern in my heart, mm-hmm. and I'm very defensive of anyone that's not South African says this. Yeah. I feel like there's an incredible literary deficit in South Africa right now. Wow. Not in not the canon. Not the canon. Right mm-hmm. now. And by right now I mean in the last ten years. Look, last year What's great the deficit that you are you've seen? What is it? What's lacking? I just wish that there were I wish there was a, a greater variety of authors. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Fred Kumala is going to write a book we know. Nikum Shlomo is going to write a book we know. Angela Mokolo is going to write a book we know. Mm. Where are the new voices? Mm. But also, where are the new literary voices? Mm. I'm not saying every book that is written has to be literature. Mm. Write your Millicent Boone and call it a Millicent Boone and it's mm. fine. Mm. But it breaks my heart to walk into exclusive books and all you see, give a loving in mid-rent. Jen comes to Jobek to find Jacob. Hey, mm. ing, 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 hey, ing, ing. Mm. And it's all like this raunchy kind yeah. of since kid generations. Generation in a book. <gasps> like I always call them the soapy genre of Yeah, books, yeah, yeah. Which I think has a, a market yeah. for them. Like go ahead. That's fair, yeah. But if we want to seriously compete on an international sure. playing field, mm-hmm. there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. And I feel like the only space that we are excelling in is poetry. Ooh, yes. Like, you know I'm a poet, so you okay. are saying the thing. Yes. I think, um, oh, love Koleka Putuma. Love Koleka. Hey, girl. Mm-hmm. Mabu. Love mm-hmm. her to death. Maneo. Oh, my God. That anthology. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. You know? So much beautiful work is coming out, and I just wish that we could extend it into literature. Mm. I'm not saying that it does not exist. Mm. I'm saying that there's a deficit. There's a deficit. Like, if we went to the Literature Olympics today, South Africa can't run next to Nigeria. They can't, no. run, ne- they can't run, run next to Zimbabwe. No. Nope. They cannot, mm, they cannot, they just can't compete, ah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. You've said a lot. Yes. 